Oh, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 563 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. I'm your host, Christian Piles, joined as always by the dynamic duo of Ben Funky Askren and, listen to this, Ben, celebrating his exact six year anniversary at Flow, Stephen Kyle Bracke. Oh, six years. Congratulations. Flow Sports. What, what do you guys get for six years? Thank you, friends. So, um,. Well, we, they just started giving us things for hitting milestones, literally yesterday. But <laughs> at one year, you get a, 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 a keychain with a paddle on it because we're trying to roll in the same direction. At three years, you get a... The white pearl. You get the white pearl. Do you, you probably know what that is. The van that they, uh, they oh, Martin the van, and yeah. Mark drove around in. How do you in. get it? Well, it's you, a, little, like, a, little, a little toy one with your name on it. Got and it. It's still here, actually, out, out back. And then five years, you get bobbleheads. So we have our own bobbleheads of ourselves. Oh, wow, nice. And eight years, you get a ring, championship ring. So that's next year for me. And then 10 years, you get to be like Mark Bader and have your banner hanging. There's not very many 10, 10 years. No. I am the... 17th most tenured person at, at Flow, and I've been here seven years. Seven. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So got it. Congrats to Kyle. Thank you, guys. Six yeah. years. A lot of us started in October. You, Holmes, me. It's a good, good, good time to start, kick off a career. Okay. Right before wrestling season. Yeah, baby. So, um, I don't know if we should let Ben just kind of start the beginning of this because. So you know we you did guys, the bracket. Hold I on. pushed the bracket show. It yeah. sucked. Listen up. <laughs> So How about that? Ben is always trying to push things forward, make cool things happen. I love it. That's why he's a really fun guy to work with because he's always creative, thinking new things. And you guys really wanted this thing too. I just felt like it was going to be really terrible and I could just make a really cool bracket and we could put our heads together and do something cool. But I think it's cool that we gave it a shot and we have our bracket now. But we're not going to show you the video for everyone's sake. <laughs> I should make those of you that berated me on Facebook and said, oh, CP is a control freak. I should send it to you and make you watch it <laughs> and suffer through it. And then you can say, I'm sorry. You were right. I was wrong. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the high road here. Let Ben explain it. And then we're going to break down the bracket. And it's going to be really fun because we have the bracket. Well, Christian, I, I just don't understand why these guys don't get it. Listen, you know what? Maybe someone like Keith Gavin, who's division one head coach, maybe he should, you know, not talk some trash or something. But the rest of them, listen, if they were good enough to promote a show where you guys did a whole bunch of subs, you would have them back every single month and they would make a whole bunch of money and they would be so happy to be being paid to wrestle every single month. I don't understand why they can't understand that, Christian. What? Let me ask you this. Listen, I didn't talk any trash to Jordan Burroughs. I did, however, promote the event. If I wanted to wrestle another match, and now I can't right now, my hips hurt, would you have me back, Christian? Y yes. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I did the most subs ever for a match which wasn't effing competitive. Yes. I can't beat Jordan Burroughs in a wrestling match, but yet a lot of people bought it. Why? Because I understand how to promote a show. And if I wanted to do another wrestling match, Flo would promote another wrestling match with me whenever I wanted. Now, I'm not saying all of these people can be outstanding promoters, but they can say something. They could do something. Most of them just sat there and stared at me like I was trying to F and torture them. It was so frustrating. Well, I do think, and, and we discussed this a little bit, but I think an element of this has always kind of come more natural to you and as a competitor. And I think for most of these guys, it's not something they've ever even had to consider. How do I sell this thing and you know what in general wrestling and i won't say sells itself because we are kind of where we are as a sport we're about, we're the oldest sport yet we're behind 70 other sports right so i guess we can't say we are where we are but in many ways wrestling does sell itself on just being awesome it goes a long way on just being the most exciting sport with you know not the biggest personalities necessarily necessary well, because the sport's okay. so exciting but how, okay, but how are you get so taste with flow is essentially should be taking a lot of credit for doing that, right? And I've only been working for you guys for not, e not even a year, so I, I can't take any credit for flow. But I mean, if we look 
eight, 10 years ago, we, wrestling was in a much, much worse place. And Flo's been able to give this outstanding coverage. And so now wrestling is getting up there. But right, how many senior level wrestlers are making six figures? And the answer to that is uh, two, three. I don't know. Not a lot. The answer is not a lot. And if you, and then if you take sponsorships away, the answer is probably zero, Christian. Yeah. Why would you take sponsorships away? Well, because I'm just saying from well how, well, how many Major League Baseball players are making six figures? How many NFL players are making six figures? How many MMA players are making six figures? On, on just on strictly on their performance ca- contracts. Yeah. For baseball and um, football, the answer is all. Yeah. yeah. All basketball all of them right i mean so wrestling is still relatively far down that that list of sports and if we want to become a mainstream we now listen they don't got to all act like conor mcgregor but you have to moderate you have to (laughs) well i don't think you'd be saying please don't when you do some gigantic sub events i mean you'd be saying uh that effing guy again but then you'd be like ching ching right um (laughs) yeah yeah you would you would i promise um so, you know, we would have that balance of, well, I don't really love this part of it, but they can promote a little bit. They can do a little bit of promotion. Yeah, I I think it's it's just not the most comfortable thing. Um, I, I mean, not, obviously, you know I'm what, with you. you know I'm what? with you, Ben. I think there's a way not to the do most it. comfortable thing, Christian, and we all figured out a way to be successful in this sport, or all of those guys did, right? They all figured it out. It wasn't comfortable the first time they got their face shoved in the mat or they got a cross face right across their nose. They probably didn't say, Oh, I love that. Give me some more of that. I bet right? if they someone had, had they wanted to be good. If someone had like thrown the first stone, maybe it would have got going. But if no one really wanted to do it, no one wants to be the first guy to be like, Yeah, give me Keith Gavin. He's too old or something. Yeah. Um so uh, that's definitely what I would have went with. Because you know, it's not that offensive. It's true. Uh, yeah. He is you know, old. There you go. So, okay. Uh why don't we you, we'll, we'll start with kind of the blank bracket, and we can kind of go through the process of how the bracket got built. Is that cool, Ben? Sure. I, I should just, like, pretend I'm these guys and talk some trash for them. Yeah, you, you could do that. Sell it for us, Ben. So who had the, fir- who had the first go. pick, Ben? Oh, man. Now you're going to make me bring that. Okay, I hold on. My Google Drive is not up. It was Shakur uh, Rashid. Yeah. Sorry. I just, I'm <laughs> trying to tee you up. <laughs> you're I know the me. answer. That was rhetorical. Well, you didn't have any- it's fine. It's Shakur, fine. You know what's funny? Shakur Rashid somehow stayed on the call when everyone hung up. And he was like, yeah, you know, I thought someone was going to start talking trash. And I thought it was going to be fun. But no one started, so I didn't start. And I said, listen, if I would have known you had the attitude, I would have got you going and, and, and lit it on fire. But listen, Kale already yells at me enough, so I didn't want to I didn't want to say anything else. Okay. Um, so Shakur, <laughs> sure, well, he went and put himself at the top spot of the bracket. Um Okay, and yeah. then the first two spots are boring. First two spots are boring. Keith put Keith puts himself on the same side as Shakur in the four spot, which I think um, is is telling in itself, right? I think it's telling a little bit. I think he's saying, "Hey, I I could beat Shakur Rashid probably." He didn't want to go so I, like, far as to put him himself in, in Shakur's match, though. Yes, but you know he puts himself on the same side, which only you know the other thing that only leaves two spots on the top, right? And there's a, there's. You know, I would say Shakur is one of the guys in this bracket has not proven him really proven himself in freestyle at all. Um, he had the match with Sammy Brooks, which was decent. What was that like last month? And that was mm-hmm. kind of strange rules. So we're not sure exactly if that translates exactly to freestyle. But yes, there's he's probably one of the lower ranked guys, I would guess. Yes, he he did impress, right, next, impress me. Yeah, who is next? Next up, Nate Jackson, and he goes in the five spot, which is opposite of Keith Gavin. Um, you know, I thought that was telling because if he says Keith's easy and I think I could beat Shakur, he picks that side. Then there's only one spot left, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and at least at least that's how I would went with it. If I said I like these two guys, so he must say, okay, you know, Keith was really good, multiple time world team member. I I don't know that they've ever worked out. Um, but I think that you know when you pick the open side of the bracket and you leave three spots open versus one spot open, I think that's what you were probably thinking. Yeah, I mean, I think it's clearly. I mean, and you know, you can draw the other line is he didn't want Keith more specifically. Um, okay, next up. Yeah. Uh, next up was Drew Foster, and Drew Foster did the bottom of the bracket right there. 
uh, oh. eighth spot. Yep, right there. Uh, probably the same thing. I, 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 who knows? Maybe these guys didn't really think about it when they were doing it. But again, uh, if you pick the top of the bracket, you only leave one spot open. And now he's saying, I prefer to wrestle Nate Jackson over Shakur State and Keith Gavin is what I think he's saying if he's thinking about it. What's interesting about the first four, and it kind of goes to your point, is that nobody chose a match against anyone. Mm. Everyone put themselves in an empty yeah. spot. Yeah. Did Drew and Nate wrestle at... Um... They did not wrestle at the U.S. Open. Drew took uh, fourth. Nate took second. I don't think they did. Wait, no, no. I don't. Nate, think they Nate did. took second, right? Is that what you said? Yeah, Nate took. They took second. Drew took fourth. I don't think they hit. No. Um. Yes, they did. Hold on. Hold the phone. Well, hold uh, the phone, Kyle. Nate would have won. Must have. Nate won. obviously would have won because his only loss is to Keith. But I, th- I thought they didn't meet Gabe. Christian. I'm. Gonna, are you looking? Yeah, I'm looking. They wrestled. Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll tell you about number five, and then we'll go. So number five is Miles Martin, which I thought this was the most interesting one. Um, so first he says, well, I want spot number six, which, which should be against Nate. And so I said, oh, so you you want to wrestle Nate? Is there a reason? And he goes, no, actually, switch me to spot seven. <laughs> and and it's Drew Foster. And I said, well, is there a reason that you chose Drew over Nate? And he wouldn't really give me an answer, or it wasn't a good answer if it was an answer. Um, so I, I thought – I thought that was kind of interesting because obviously Nate had the significantly better performance um, at at the U.S. Open, and now now obviously we're to the part of the bracket where they kind of they had he had to pick a first round matchup, right? There was no non first round matchup, right? Yeah, so it was a seven four so, win for Jackson over Foster, so competitive match for sure. Yeah, so why? Well, yeah, maybe Foster should have picked the other side then. Maybe I don't, that I don't know. Maybe season. maybe felt good after that match. Maybe he's like. Yeah, I'm all right with this. Yeah, right. and so Drew Foster said something like, let's run it back um, against Miles Martin. Yeah. I do remember Miles Martin over Drew Foster, I believe, was kind of ugly. That was the season of 2019. That was remember the, that match? Yeah, it was um, – I think they re- might have wrestled multiple times. Uh, I remember the one time in West Gym, right? It oh, just one close. time. Eight. It says only one one meeting between the two, an eight six win for Miles. Okay, okay. well, that was co- actually that was closer than I remember it. Um, that was the NCAA yeah, it, in seventeen, actually. So that was okay. I'm way off. Ancient history. <laughs> I thought they ancient hit a history. CKLV at some point, but they didn't. I thought Both so also. Would've... Yeah. Well, so Drew's improved. Uh, that's seventeen. Drew's improved a ton since 2017. Yeah, he won one NCAAs. Bracky's got the. They met at consolation round at was at the open. That would be world team world trials. team trials. Raleigh and Miles was a eight oh winner. What's interesting also there is is Drew won the weight that we said Miles Martin is going to win definitively, no doubt, guarantee. And then Miles lost to Max Dean. Foster beats Dean. Miles got third his senior year at NCAA's, but the edge is two zero for Miles in this. Uh, in this rivalry. Okay, next spot. Hmm. What we got? All right, next spot. Sammy Brooks just logs off, and we tried giving him, like, some time to log back on, but he wouldn't log back on. Love I it. don't know what he was – I don't know what he's doing. So I said, okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going we're gonna to skip you. We're going to give Taylor the opportunity to pick, and then if you're, if you're not back, we're going to let the, the field put you in somewhere. So, and Sammy Brooks, he still hasn't show back up. It's like 24 hours later, and we don't know where he is. <laughs> I'm assuming he's in Iowa somewhere. So, what happened? Where'd Taylor Lujan go? Taylor pick. Oh, man. I'm forgetting now. Keith Gavin. Because it got switched here. Didn't he? He picked Shakur, right? Mm. No, he didn't. He picked Keith. He, he picked, picked Keith, Keith, which was a bad pick. I don't know why he picked Keith. Yeah. Kind of a whiff there. That was not... That was not good because, yeah. you know, Keith or Shakur, I'm picking Shakur for sure. That's, and that's going to be fresh Keith Gavin, right? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, if, you're right. You get Keith later in the bracket because, I mean, I would say for for an older guy, the hardest thing would be wrestling multiple matches. Going out there and doing one's not all that bad, but then coming back and doing another one and another one is way more difficult. Right. And, yeah, the, from a matchup perspective, I just am having a hard time. I think there are guys that could give, I think, Someone like Nate Jackson could be a tough matchup for for Keith. 
just someone that's going to be really good at getting to legs, blowing through head, hand stuff, and can finish quickly. Luhan's yes. thing will have to be, I'm, I'm going to bomb you, or I'm going to hit something really slick. And like, I don't, Gavin's the most slick guy out there. That. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, who's this Michael Andrew guy in the chat, and how how does he watch? Is he I'm a flow player or something? Those, no, he's not. I'm assuming one of those guys said something. No, he said he he's talking about that. He's a little saying Miles I know, Martin. I'm assuming that said, one of the guys on the call told him. You think? But then he's saying now he's talking about when Sugar Shack signed back in to talk with me. It was well, hilarious. Referenced, referenced and then that. oh, maybe he was on there. Okay, but then someone said. Um, Someone said that was dumb. When, and C Christian, if I would know who it was, I probably would have kicked him out of the tournament. I don't know if I could do that, but I would have attempted to tell you to kick him out of the tournament because that's the kind of shit attitude I don't need um, when I'm trying to make you guys money. And he says it's Miles, but I'm not sure who it was. <laughs> I hope not. I hope, I, hope me, I hope you misheard completely. None of them said that. Um, no, they, oh, they definitely. It was clear as day because me, me and Tyler and Shaq started laughing about it. Got it. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So Sammy Brooks still does not come back. We don't know where he is. He could be in Iowa City. We're not really sure. Could be anywhere. Uh, so we take a group vote. There's seven of them in the room. So I say group vote. Do you want him to face Shakur? Do you want him to face Nate? They put him against Nate. Love it. Obviously. Yeah, there's the history there. That's great. Uh, you know, Shakur actually said, give me Sammy Brooks. But I said, hey, man. I already said I was going to make group vote. I love that you want it, but you know that's probably where it would have been fun because Sammy Brooks would have said, you don't want none of this or something to that effect. And they just wrestled at Submission Underground, right. and it was really competitive. Yes, it was, which leaves but one spot, and it is uh, – I, I think it's the spot no one wanted, the guy no one wanted probably in round one or maybe in the round, Gabe Dean. Well, so Shakur was the one that was open – Right, yeah. the whole time because he's the first one on the board and he's the last one to be picked. But Gabe Dean does the old switcheroo because we said the last person could switch one person, and he does. He switches Keith to Shakur and he takes Taylor Luhan first round, which I predicted that I would do if I was Gabe Dean because Luhan beat up on uh, Max Dean at the to kick him out of the U.S. Open. Oh, I didn't realize that's how this yeah. one materialized. That is interesting. Yes. So it's going to be Luhan versus Gabe Dean, Keith Gavin. <laughs> what? what? Michael says we had the link up on Flow for it. There was not a link. He I logged in and watched it. I do not know what he oh, was man. talking about. Oh, man. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> you guys had it live? No, it was not live. Listen, Michael saying it was at, it was at 930 know, ben, Pacific ben, Standard Time. Move Which... on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, someone's trolling me. Got it. Michael's trolling me. Okay, so Gabe flips it. Gabe's got Taylor. Uh, you know, I thought I said I would have, if I had to just kind of see this in my head, I felt like Gabe and Keith were number one and two. Nate and Miles were probably three and four. Um, and maybe then Sammy Brooks five is kind of like how I would have thought. And so essentially we kind of have what I think is the one and two on the one side, three, four, and five on the other. Um, I think it worked out kind of decently. I, I like how it worked out. Um, it could have been cool to separate Keith and Gabe just because in our minds they're the probably yeah. top two guys. There's a, such an element of mystery with Keith. Gabe, not as much now because we just watched him win a really loaded tournament. But with Keith, it, it's like, you know, you're kind of operating under the memory of Keith, what he what he had done. But I I feel like... It almost guarantees that matchup. I think, I think Gavin matches up great with Shakur, and I think Luhan does not match up great against Gabe Dean. I think he's going well, to. So they actually wrestled at the open, and Gabe kicked his butt. Yes. So. But then it, he beat Max on the backside. Max Dean on the backside. Right. So he he owes him that one back. Mm hmm. So I, I I like the way the bracket. I mean, I think Kevin. One of, the, one of the things I would have wanted to do if, if we'd have been putting our heads together to make the bracket, I'd be like, we need to make sure Sammy Brooks and Nate Jackson wrestle because <laughs> it's been – it's crazy. There's, I mean, Nate has been up huge on this guy, almost teched him multiple times, and then can't finish the match, right? And, and Sammy comes back. 
And so, so it's how like, many times has that happened, Christian? At I, least I twice. I remember the one at, at Dallas last year, right? Or wherever the heck we were in Texas. Fort Worth, and it happened at the Open, I'm almost positive. Okay. So mm-hmm. um, I, I can look up the specific uh, results there, but it, it's something like mm-hmm. that. So, like, part of you is like, okay, Sammy Brooks is just going to win this match because he just goes so freaking <laughs> hard. And the, well, part of me is like, Nate is a point and a finish away from just this match being done in two and a half minutes. So Yeah, I agree. It, there's like a tech fall. There, it's very rare, you would say. The the two most likely outcomes would be a tech fall for either guy. But it could be yeah. that kind of scenario, uh, which is what's so interesting about it. And I think so, Nate looked great at, at the at Open. The Open. And, and he, you know, debatably, you know, it was just the – you can call it a coin flip loss if you want because there's nothing really separating Gabe and Nate at that point. And um, it makes me think they're going to hit in the finals uh, uh, this one. Hey, let me uh, let me ask you this. So Sammy Brooks logged off and disappeared, so we had to pick a spot. Um, do you think he's happy with the matchup against Jay Jazz because he's, cause he's undefeated against him? Or do you think he's like, damn, that's a tough matchup because I usually just get a lot of points scored on me. I can really see him thinking either way because I can see him think, oh, yeah, I always win this one. And I could also see him thinking, damn, that guy's tough. He always scores a whole bunch of points on me. Yeah, I don't think you're that pumped if you're – I, I would – someone, anyone that can score eight or nine points on you with before you score is not – that's not ideal, no matter how the match ends. And so with that reason, I, I think – not ideal if you're Sammy Brooks, but at the same time, it's like, well, I know yeah. I can beat him. But at the same time, so there's two two ways to look at it. One, you could say, okay, it's not ideal that I have Nate Jackson in round one, and maybe I would prefer to go against Shakur Rashid in round one. But if it means I'm opposite of Gabe Dean Gabe and, and, and potentially Gavin, I'm taking that because – Sammy Brooks is like undefeated against Miles Martin. I don't think yeah, he's ever gonna, lost. Yeah, I was going to say, he's beaten him every single time, right? Right. So when you consider that, if we can have the bracket back up, um, it would be Nate versus Sammy in round one. And Miles uh, is likely a favorite over over Foster, right? So Yeah, for, I, I would so, say Miles is never a Foster, yes. So just using history. Sammy has a great path to the finals opposite both guys. I feel like if you're on that bottom side, you're you're kind of pumped right now because you're going to have winnable matches to make it. And I think, is Sammy the favorite to make the final from the bottom side, Ben? Uh, it's, I mean, Nate just looked really good. So, I mean, I kind of I, – I feel the same way as you. Like, it wouldn't be that hard for Nate to score one more takedown and finish that thing off. And obviously, he's shown the ability to score points on Sammy Brooks. Um, and then – yeah, and then, but then I, I can see it going the other way because it has. Um, Sammy has always beaten uh, Miles Martin, and I think Miles Martin is likely the favorite over Drew Foster. However, uh, so one however, thing what? for for Miles, it's like yes, that he has lost to Sammy. Uh, he lost to him at in folk style, and he's lost to him. I think it was U twenty three trials, but Miles yeah. took it to another level. Um, in the 2019 season, and then freestyle, he beats Ringer. So we've seen a real evolution in him as as a wrestler, right? He's the higher ranked guy, so matchups yeah, matter. But, but then, on, on Christian, on that on that note, we just saw a really terrible performance out of him like two months ago. We did, and then, but the other, so like it's like this pendulum just keeps swinging back and forth. So like on the one hand. Yeah. He's been getting better and better and better. On the other hand, he lost uh, a match really dominantly. On the other hand, for that one, it was David Taylor who destroys everyone. He's kind of good. Yeah. yeah. So Hey, Greg, Greg Mack is in the chat. Tell Greg Mack next time I'm going to hire him to take Miles' spot because I bet he's going to say something funny if I got him. He would. The, the Mack man would he, deliver. He's, he's really good. <laughs> uh, I Next time, Christian, I should let these guys have a surrogate. If they feel like I can't talk, they get to hire someone like in WWE and they get the oh, manager yeah. the guy can't talk. That's what I'm doing next time. Yeah. I'm just not doing this surrogate. next time. Wow. <laughs> Bracky's putting the kibosh on next time. Well, you guys had the link live. There's there's like seven people who watched it. 
Dang. We can the link was we can create <laughs> we can create a better bracket than this by just like sitting down and looking at the storylines and figuring this out. Yeah. Um, who would you have picked, Bracky? What's your bracket? If no, you I, I'm bracket? not saying this bracket is bad. I guess just my point is. No, I'm just saying. What is your bracket? Pick this one. I don't have a bracket. I'm, say, I'm just saying we can just go about this but a much better did, way. That if I said right now, Kyle Bracky. I haven't even thought about uh, it. Does it take a while? Oh, okay. No, I just haven't thought about it. I haven't looked at it. I'm just saying, like, these guys yeah. clearly aren't going to buy in and do this. Um, Maybe these guys wouldn't. You think Jordan Oliver think, wouldn't get into this? Give me a break. Yeah. J.O. would. I would think play we ball. just. Oh, I so think we just don't invite them back. Again. If they don't Mr. promote it, if they don't no, promote I'm, not, it, I'm gonna no, dunk no, no. on everyone that dunked on me at the beginning of the show. No, I did I did <laughs> I did dunk on everyone because they had a dunk coming because they were out of pocket. But I will say part part of my rationale was who the eight were. I was like, the, these guys, mm, yeah. what what's Gabe Dean gonna say? This is like the nicest dude ever. Um Gabe Dean's actually really funny. So yes, he was I know. one guy that so maybe I Keith. thought that slipped a few barbs in there. Keith's funny. Keith probably talked the most out of anybody, but at the wow. same time, he's a head wrestling coach, so he's got to you know carry himself in a specific manner. Yeah. Uh he's so, really funny though. Yeah, for for sure. He's really um he is funny. But you know, the 150, if you get um you know, Green, James Green's a really interesting guy, he's clever for sure. Oliver is funny. Oliver, for sure, right? And, and aggressive. Yes. Aggressive, yes. So, I don't know. I, I'm not saying we're going to do it, but I'm saying the 150, I'm sure, would uh, um, deliver. And you know what? But, but you know what else, Ben? It's like. What's that? If the thing doesn't happen the way you want it to, it's like you could. We, the easy thing is to be like, oh, yeah, they didn't play along. But it's like, well, what could we have done differently to maybe make it more of a success. I'm sure that there's plenty of blame and I'm not putting it on you or any, anything. No, but you put it on me. I, I, I'm a grown, I'm a grown man. I'm 30. I could take this Gabe Gabe Dean alleged he's not 30. He might be though. Listen, Christian, <laughs> I get it. I'm, there's, trying, there's I'm multiple going documents against, that verify Gabe Dean is not 30. I realize I'm going against a hundred years of the way people think about wrestling and that it's this blue collar thing and we can't say anything and we can't be funny and we can't promote and we can't talk trash. I get it. I'm going against the grain. Tough shit, guys. I'm going to go against the grain. To, and this is to everybody. This is uh, this is the eight guys who were in the thing yesterday who, who wouldn't say anything. Listen, if, I, if I'm if i in charge, which who knows, Christian, you guys might put me in charge at some point. So you guys, eight guys better beware. And you guys don't want to promote the event that we're putting on. I just won't invite you back. You won't make money. Tough, tough deal. That's it. Yeah, it's that simple. I'm gonna invite guy, the back guy, the guys who want to make us money, who want to make themselves money. That's who I'm gonna pay over and over again. And it's that simple. And any promoter with half a brain is gonna do the exact same thing. Yeah. No, you think I, Dana White loves Conor McGregor because of his morals? No, it's because he makes him money. Of course. That's why. That's why Dana had to bite the bullet and uh, trade for Ben Askren. It's like this guy. I mean, you know? look at the the numbers. Don't lie. All you gotta do is look at the numbers. Amen. Okay. Yeah. So that's the bracket. Um, you know, we're going to do like a pick them contest like we have. Do you think there's any, any way, could anyone get all eight matches right? I mean, obviously the there's matches? a way. Mm, I thought I counted yesterday. Four, two, one. <laughs> what Four, about two, the third place match? Oh, we're doing third place match. Yes. Damn it. I thought we were doing no losers matches. Okay. That's the one You're we're right. doing. If you make the... Yeah, it's on the bracket itself. I'm not looking. At, I'm, well, I'm looking at you right now. Okay, well, I'm looking at you. Not look at the bracket. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a third. There's eight. There's eight <laughs> matches. Uh, okay. Uh, I think, yeah, I think someone could get all eight matches, right? That's not that unlikely. Well, we'll see. Um, so, we'll, we'll be doing that. A lot more content to come about the, about the bracket, the eight man. And while the show wasn't what we wanted, um, the bracket – Bracket sick. And we can't wait for it. October 31st. The spookiest bracket of all time. Okay. Next up. Where are we going now? We're going to maybe the the thing we didn't talk about with the NCAA ruling that is sort of the the spookiest of all. Is, oh, I had a um, few people text me about this last yeah, time. Yeah. I, I, did, I didn't see this until actually Yaya Thomas' dad DM me. I was like, hey, did you see this? And I'll read it uh, to you. We'll put it on the screen, uh -oh. but 
Okay, go Ben. Uh, is, is is this a permanent thing, Christian? Because obviously it doesn't say within this thing. Is this a permanent thing or is this a uh, non-permanent? I would imagine it's not permanent. Um, I, okay. I think since, you know, the scenario. Well, let me read it first. Hold on. Because no one knows what okay. I'm talking about yet, Ben. Additionally, Division I schools will not be required to sponsor the minimum number of sports for membership purposes. Provide the school indicated on sports, blah, 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 Um. So what was that? That's basically the main thing is I'm not going to read the whole thing, but they're not required to um, have the minimum number of sports that make you D1 eligible as a institution, right? So wrestling is often in the crosshairs for being canceled as programs. And the minimum number of sports is something that, you know, is a barrier to wrestling getting dropped. Now that barrier doesn't exist, and that's that means these programs need to stand on their own merits all the more. So while we can celebrate the fact that, hey, the underclassmen from last year are all going to get four cracks at NCAs and be excited about that, there's the other side of the coin where, listen, Stanford dropped wrestling. Old Dominion, these are legit programs that don't mm-hmm. exist anymore. So we're that's one thing that, we should be wary of. It is not good news for wrestling. There's nothing good about that. This is basically enabling te- uh, schools to drop programs and maintain Division One status. So not good. Yeah, I mean, this is and not just wrestling, but this is probably not good for any sports not named football or basketball. And, and as we've seen this spring, luckily – Wrestling is not at the back of the list. We've been able to promote ourselves in a fashion where we're filling up crowds and stuff. So mm-hmm. it's getting to be a really good situation where, right? Uh, you know, when they say, like, if me and you and Kyle are running from the bear, we don't got to be faster than the bear. We just got to be faster than someone else. Yeah, you're dead I would be meat. faster. So I, ben, you I would are probably so try to trip one of you guys. I'd probably try to trip one of you guys. <laughs> Sacrifice. <laughs> um, yeah. What? The bottom you see, line, you're, not you're, fast you're dead. Tripping. Listen, here, here's the way it works. Okay. You can trip me. But I'm just going to get up, and I'll still pass you, Ben. A, you would have to hold me down. And then if you hold me down, the Bears going to get both of us. So okay. I think it, you're enough. the sacrifice. Listen, I'm, okay. I know I'm all over the place, but if you well, haven't we're seen not the this- ba- We're not at the back of the line, Christian. We're not anymore. It's yeah. tennis. It's gymnastics. It's track and field. It's all those other sports, which I is really great. wanted to talk- of tennis programs have been getting cut, too. All you guys want to talk about our programs getting cut. I just want to talk about that mountain lion video. You guys well, seen this? That has nothing to do with this. It did bring up serious legislation that has serious consequences. <laughs> and then you want to talk about a mountain lion? No, hold on. You brought up us, you know, if we're getting chased by a bear, I'm just going right next door to that with a mountain lion. This guy's getting chased by a mountain lion for six minutes yeah. up this road. That was insane. If you haven't seen that video yet, you should, you should go find it. Um, we were talking about that before the show. We would have definitely thrown rocks but- at it. So Christian, in the case that this 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 rule is not permanent, I feel like it would be much more. We're gonna get we're gonna do mountain lines in a second, but you brought us a serious legislation, so we need to talk about that. Then we can go to mountain lines. It, in the case that this is not permanent, I feel like it would almost be harder for uh, a program to drop a few teams and then bring them back in a year or two because right they have to dismantle the department, you whatever 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 then bring them back like that sounds more difficult and more expensive right. you know over the course of time maybe it's going to be some immediate cost savings but long term it won't be yeah central michigan did this pretty early into the pandemic earlier this spring and they dropped below the minimum uh, and they were the first team to do that and they were like we're working with the ncaa on a way to keep our division one status and uh, the NCAA approved them a waiver, but they have to get – so they're at five men's sports teams now. You have to be at six, at least six, to be FBS D1, which is what they want to be for football. Mm. And they gave them till 2022 to get back up to six. So that's – that that makes sense to me that it would be a temporary thing, but you never, you never know. What, once you're gone, that is <laughs> – to, to not have a program for a couple of years would be, you have to figure, close to devastating. And, you know, at this point in time, no one's racing to add those uh, wrestling programs right now. You know, we are getting new ones, but it's it's hard and it's it's a slow process. Um, 
So yeah. with, with that, it is sort of scary, scary legislation. I don't mean to make light of it um, by, by discussing, uh, you know, bears and mountain lions. But um, it is worth – it is definitely worth discussing and, you know, making sure you guys are aware that that's an option as well. So please support your – all I I would venture to guess every single one of you are fans of uh, Division One programs. So if there's if you're able to support them, please do. Our guy Nomad buys season tickets for every single Division One wrestling program. Yes, he does. So that's uh that's that's very that's very nice of him. Okay. Um, you know what we did discuss before we go to the mountain line. You know what's really important to discuss, Christian? What's that? Our man. Uh, Dan Gable got a presidential medal of freedom last night. Yeah, is this? Uh, this yeah. feels like a. I mean, first, congrats to Coach Gable. Uh, without getting <laughs> without getting political, I don't. I don't. I haven't checked the polls. Don't even want to know. But is this just some like? There was a thing going around like months ago about this. I remember we literally made fun of it because we were like, "Why? Why is this important right now?" Is he just trying to win Iowa? Is he not going to win Iowa without this? It's definitely a good – you're trying to endear yourselves to the citizens of Iowa. There's not enough things you can give uh, Danny Matt Gable. That's a, that is a yeah. – he just needs to find all the legends like that uh, in every state and give – president. It's uh, I think maybe it's desperation time for this guy, but I don't want to get political other than congrats to Coach Gable. I don't want to get political, but I literally just did. Yes. But we, is what you did. I don't want to <laughs> get political. I guess I just did. But I well, want – And then Danny, yeah. Matt, Danny Gable was on the stage with him last night. Okay. Well, yeah. No, my point is that they've been legislating or like trying to make this happen for months. Okay. Do you not remember this? Ah, uh, vaguely. I well, did, I don't remember seeing it. How is it? it? Is it a it hard thing to get around, out? It was going around Twitter, like months ago. Hmm. No, I don't remember that. I'm gonna find it. A lot of wrestling ties with the uh, with with the president. He called Ben a young superstar. He's given uh, no. Dan Gable awards. Gable awards. August seventeenth. Um, okay. There was a letter going it. around. Oh, that's right. Okay, now I remember it. I remember the letter. Uh so let's uh let's talk about this mountain lion, Christian, since you're so sad earlier. Well, I'm not sad. I'm not sad at all. But I just thought it was uh I thought it was a crazy video. And when you talked about us getting away from a bear, I don't know if you guys have seen this video. It was a video of a guy so, yeah. in Utah. Basically he is like filming there's a lot to break down about this thing. Because he's like on a trail in, I think, Utah, and there's like a mountain lion cub or whatever. And then Mama comes out of nowhere, seemingly, and he's like, oh, snap. The dude keeps his iPhone camera rolling the whole time as he's walking backwards from this guy, not running, but like facing it. And like every, I don't know, 30 seconds or so, this mountain lion like swells up and like acts like it's going to get after this guy and did you know that was the move the mountain lions did no that was what i had no idea how it's like weird it's like, like yeah it's like puffs his chest and like flaps so he was i guess running off the or she who knows probably a mama and running this dude off but never like fully pursued the guy but definitely like threatened a bunch of times the guy listen he lived so that's the ultimate um sign of victory but uh -huh. I'm grabbing a rock and I'm throwing one at this thing, trying to freak it out. I'm screaming way louder. I'm getting way scarier with this with this bad boy. I'm gonna now. I'm saying that now from a studio, not staring down the barrel of a mountain lion that could tear me limb from limb. But I just think that you hit the thing and a rock in the head and it's gonna go away. Ben, how, how do you handle this? Uh, I, I, you know what? I'm with you. I think I'm throwing a rock at the thing because uh. You know, I was reading a few other things that said, you know, shouldn't run away from a cat. And uh, I agree. I would probably throw a rock and yell at it and hope it would run away. Otherwise, maybe I would put it like in an arm bar or something. Yeah, you have to bar it up. <laughs> you might be okay. You might be able to choke out a, a mountain lion, Ben. I think I would die. They got they got little heads, though, uh, Christian. Yeah. So you got to find the size their body. Yeah. They're, they're going to be they're gonna be strong. Um, do they have mountain lions in, in Wisconsin? Probably not. What's the most dangerous animal in Wisconsin other than the citizens uh, of Manitowoc uh, County? I, 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 well, I think we have coyotes. I think there's wolves somewhere. Uh, I think there's black bears up north. Uh, and there may be mountain lions every once in a while. 
Okay. That's pretty dangerous. Yeah. I think our most dangerous one mm-hmm. is the wild hogs. That are about feral the, hogs? Feral hogs that are destroying our crops. Well, you guys got to have some kind of poisonous snake also, right? Oh, yeah. We got rattlesnakes. Mm-hmm. Black bears? Yeah. Yeah, bears. Okay. Not good. Um, oh, my gosh. J.D. Raider, listen to this. The, the brazen youngster. Uh, y'all are big. Y'all are so big cat ignorant. I would destroy a mountain lion with my bare hands. JD, JD Raider, he's full of crap. He's full of it. <laughs> he's full of it. Come on, he's from Jewel, Iowa. He he don't know better. They don't have mountain lions. They don't there. have mountain lions. They don't even have mountains. Big cat ignorant. <laughs> Listen, JD Maldonado passage looking. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> oh man, that's a roast. Oh, uh, boom, boom, roasted Jay. Hey, he, he might be in the my office. Wife is wa- Your wife's watching? My wife has wanted, uh, no, she's not. Well, I don't know Crap. if she is. I don't think so. She Actually, you know, I hear Ozzy's crying upstairs. I think he got punished. Uh, his bedroom <laughs> is right above my <laughs> office. Um, he, he's getting pretty sassy these days. But my wife is pumped. They announced yesterday, I see this next on the dock, is that the NCAs are going to visit Kansas City. I think it's going to be tremendous. Yeah, so let's talk. We got the future NCAA wrestling sites. Uh, the, the next two we knew, St. Louis and Detroit. Yep. And then I, I could not believe that Tulsa was a championship site. That stunned me. I didn't even know they were in the mix. Now, but before we go, Kyle, we are what I would consider biased individuals with an experience we have had at Tulsa. Bracky's had multiple. I've multiple. had one. I've had one. What is there, is there a ghost or something? There's no, no ghost. It's a terrible town. But aliens? This, no. We, I wish there were aliens there. Then it might be cooler. No, we had a really bad experience at Tulsa with the hotel, with us getting checked out of room. It was a whole. It was a it's whole thing. You guys buy dog um, crap hotels. It was it's not low. dog crap. Why don't you, it was, it really at least buy like a hotel. two and a half star. You guys buy a one and a half star. I'll tell you one which one it sometime. was. Someone in Facebook, look it up. The Quality Inn and Suites in Tulsa. Look it That's up. That's like a one star. No. That's was, on you. Listen, the first night we stayed there, it was fine. There was no no issues. Well, <laughs> actually, there was an issue. There's only seven crackheads. There was only seven crackheads running around outside I'll, my room. I'll, I'll back up and say that there were no <laughs> issues because – what happened when we checked into the hotel, we were supposed to have – it was Bracky and I were, were, uh, were rooming, and supposed to have two double beds, obviously. And we go in there. There's one bed, and there's a – there's a the window is open on the bed. And, like, there's a, there's a window on the bed. So I was like, all right, this isn't going to work. So we got a room what, what switch. You, what it's a whole long – On the bed. So the bed was close I mean, like to the, the window. Physical window is on and the, the window bed. was just laying. Like it's one that you can like pull open and it was just Christian, laying on the, the bed. At the one star hotel. <clears throat> is it literally a one star? Did you look it up? No, if the, the one... if the window's on the bed, it's a one every, star. Every every quality sure. in Tulsa is at least a three star. Three. There's one four star, but that doesn't There's look no like way. the one we stayed. That is a lie. Definitely Listen, a lie. You know what, Ben? We don't travel in the circles you do, okay? We're not doing the headlining Listen. fights. Okay, I, I was, I'm not, you know, sometimes I stay in nice places, but I'm going to give you guys a tip right here. Okay, there's this app, right, called Priceline. Uh-huh. Okay, you, you see this Priceline app? Oh, yep. where's the, oh, there, there we go. Okay, listen, you can get like, uh, th- you know, Greg Warren's got a whole bit on this in his comedy routine. You can get like a three, four-star hotel for, you know, the price of like a one-star. Like, I mean, literally, if I go to Tulsa, I can find a nice hotel. Like Wait, a three you can pay for, for this. I don't know. Is Priceline yeah, pay what is bucks? <laughs> Listen, they need to pay me. He's going to do a Priceline podcast soon. Yeah, you and Front Row Brian Listen, are going to do a I'm Priceline you, I'm going to find you. <laughs> Priceline should sponsor me. There's been a few companies who I really like, and I talk about despite the fact that they don't pay me, and they really should. And Priceline will be one of them. I use Priceline very frequently. Okay, listen. I don't know why they don't pay me. Listen, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look something nice up for you here. The B, listen, the B, go the BOK Press Center. Fields. Where dog? Look at this. Fifty bucks for a four star. Oh, hold on. Right there. Look at that. Four star hotel. What's it called? Fifty. Fifty bucks. Yeah. What is it? It's Express Deal. They give you a four star. A four star can't be bad, Christian. <laughs> Come on, man. I just hooked you up. You guys can use this app if you want. It's so easy. We can use it. We can use wow. that. We got it. It took 20 seconds. Look at that. 50 bucks. Four star. Christian, four star hotel. That's $50. That's under the budget for, for flow. For sure. Yeah, for sure. It is. All right. Let's talk about Tulsa. 
because <laughs> the BOK Center, where it is, is a very nice arena. Very nice. We've been, I've been there multiple times for Big 12s. They have alcohol, so fan, fans, <laughs> fans will like that. Yes, they will. Um, but the, the city of Tulsa, that's a really weird host site to me. There's just not a ton to do there. I, I thought like. they've been doing a ton of stuff there, though, haven't they? Don't they have like that Big 12 basketball there a lot? Big 12 ba- like no, that? Big 12 basketball is like Kansas City where they host, where they're going to be hosting in 2024. Okay. What's it? Is it? Oh, it's, it's the wrestling's in Tulsa every year then. Right. Okay. Listen, I it gets even better. The fifty star, fifty dollar four star deal. It's in the same region that the BOK Center. So you could probably even walk to the BOK Center. Wow, that'll be okay. Well, there's no way we're getting that for fifty bucks during NCAA's yeah. weekend. Well, not during NCAA's, but yeah, <laughs> you know, you just go visit Tulsa for fifty bucks for fun. Christian could take his wife on a wonderful date there. I mean, I'm sure they direct from <laughs> Tulsa to Austin. No problem. Fine. We'll let you book actually, our travel. I, 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 I'm going to become the Flow Sports travel agent. I actually uh, played in the 2006 Disc Golf World in Tulsa. It was fantastic. I had a great time. Well, wonderful. Well, Bracky's, Bracky's not so jazzed about Tulsa. Nope. Um but Cleveland, you guys almost died, so you're probably less no, excited about that, right? Cleveland was you were Cleveland. Other than the, probably New York City, I think Cleveland's my favorite place they've ever had NCAA's. Murder Hotel wasn't nice, but Cleveland was awesome. <laughs> but it was like a character. It was like a friend. Uh, it was like a part of the story that made it a little more interesting. And I like Cleveland, okay. but more than anything, I thought Cleveland crowd was the best crowd ever. They were insane. Really? Yes, I just thought they were like unglued. It was really lit. The Saturday night because it was St. Patrick's Day, and I think there was a little bit more time between sessions because they started a little bit later because it was on East Coast mm-hmm. instead of Central Time. The final oh, started yeah, a little nice. bit later, so uh, I think the crowd was a little more uh, tuned up. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And then 2024 well, Kansas I, City. I've been to the I'm Big Twelve Wrestling Kansas Championships City. there. I've never been and to it, Kansas that, City. That arena is really nice, and yeah, it's right across the street from the everything. Power and Light District, right, or whatever Correct. it's called. Yep. So yeah, and there's tons of hotels, restaurants. Every everything is real nice and close there. Um, and people are, are salty because the 2002 NCAs was in Kansas City, and they had it in Kemper Arena, which was down like it's like I think they called the Bottoms or something. It's where there's the river and all the train tracks and stuff, and it was really like nasty. There was not good parking, not no places to stay or eat in, and so it's not down there. Don't worry, it's <laughs> it's up in the new arena. And there's like a lot of really cool stuff around it. Well, I'm worried about Philadelphia because I went to NCAs there. That was the worst. That was not good. Terrible. Not good. So Spay is Spay is claiming that they have built this new like big mall place really close to the arena. That's just a bunch of bars and restaurants. Really? That's what Spay's claiming. Since the Incident Boys were there last, yes. That was 2010 or 11. 2010. It was. It, no, it was 11. Yeah, it was 11. Penn right, State's first chip. Yep. And that was, uh, I mean, it was just down like, it, where is it at in Philly? It's like in the middle of nowhere. It's right? not in the city. It's like out in the in the burbs. We stayed in a terrible, really? oh, we stayed in the worst place there. That was like on par with the murder murder hotel. Really? I've told this story. Yeah, it's uh, in, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. It is the, uh, it is the hotel where Mac's dad, who just got, got out of prison, stays at. They like. For the establishing shot, like on the outside, it's literally this this hotel we stayed at. It was really bad, and it was a place when wow. they ran the place ran out of towels, and so the guy came up and he handed me a bath mat. He's like, "Ah, uh, yeah, this is all we got. We're out of towels." Oh my God. Yeah. So, wow. Lit. Um, <laughs> what well, you guys should you guys should you know I know you guys probably have a, a normal travel budget, but you guys should make your travel department realize that the NCAA ho- hotels cost a lot more because. The price always obviously shoots up because of the influx of people. It's not like a normal travel weekend. We're getting better. The Pittsburgh accommodations were great. We stayed in an awesome place for. for it was like nice. apartment style. It was sweet. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, Pitt- everyone had their own room except for. Uh, well, yeah, I think everyone had their own room. The funniest thing was when you know Spay's a really tall. He, he's a big person, right? He's tall, mm-hmm. and Nomad took the giant bed and left Spay in like the. The Michael there Scott one, into yeah. the bed thing. These these they were like apartments, so two yeah. people stayed in them. You each had your own bedroom though, and in the one there was like a like a 
master bedroom, like his full king size bed, and the other was just like a twin size bed, and Spade's big ass is sleeping on the twin. <laughs> that was messed up. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I'm looking at Philly, uh, Kyle. The way you're talking about, there they have added. It looks like there's a handful of restaurants in like a, a one central district, but there's still no hotels or anything. It's kind of like in the middle of nowhere. Yes, it literally is not good. It's not near anything. I don't understand it. So the thing in Philly is called Xfinity Live. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of restaurants and stuff, but it's not like there's. It's not like you can walk to the hotels. Like in Kansas City, for example, you'd be able to go to Power and Light, you know, get lit, have some food. And then walk to your hotel. I mean, I got to assume that there's almost enough hotels to accommodate everyone within walking distance. It's a, there's a ton of hotels down there. Cool. Oh. cool. Okay, so we've All got right. the uh, we, we went over that Philadelphia and Cleveland in 26. We're going back. We're going back. Uh, were you a little surprised to see no Minneapolis? I thought they were going to try this again. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I w- Very you sad. always have to wonder: Did they put in a bid? A lot of people are upset that there was no southern cities, which I. I kind of agree with like, like, there's plenty of cities in the south, or I don't know, change it up a little. Atlanta would be good. Atlanta, Vegas would be awesome. Oh my gosh, Phoenix. How about like Tempe? You know? Yeah, that would be. But there's the, yeah. I mean, I think you go. I think if you went, you go southeast because there's so many programs on the east coast. Yeah. Uh, and I think I mean I just feel like it would be easier to add programs in a uh, Georgia or Florida than it would because you can go. North Carolina's got a bunch of wrestling. Virginia's got a bunch of wrestling. Georgia's uh, I would, getting better. Yeah. Georgia, well, I, I'm saying at the college level, those have uh, a ton of wrestling. Uh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So they wouldn't have to travel super far to get to other programs. Um, so, yeah, man, I would love to see it promoted more out there. I, I know they, they probably don't think about that when it comes into effect, but that would probably help some. If Tulsa's on the table, I think Charlottesville, Virginia should be in the mix. I'm just going to put it out there. John Paul Jones Arena. Charlottesville? Oh, yeah. That's a population of like fifteen thousand, right? Ah, uh, I'm saying it's big enough. I'm saying it's got the Mag- arena. Charlotte, maybe? No, <laughs> no. Charlotte would be nice. Why not? Yeah, Charlotte's nice. Because I've never been there, and I want it in Charlottesville. That's. <laughs> is it? What else do you need? <laughs> not being Are rational. Gonna... Not being rational. No, not at all. So, uh, excited for for. I don't know. It's just cool to future. think about future NCAA wrestling sites. The population of Charlottesville is 45,000. There's no way they can host an NCAA. Well, the, the, <laughs> there's a sprawl. There, there's area. There's plenty. You know what? They'll Stop. figure it out. By 2026, who knows how big it'll be. It could be 50,000 at that oh, point. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they should have NCAA right. in Austin. That'd be sick. Austin, that would be wonderful. You love Austin. There's no wrestling. I love Austin, but there's no wrestling there, so it's gonna be. Dude, really hey, you know what? You say there's no wrestling, freaking Round college, Rock College. Yeah, I know, but dang, Round Rock High School had bigger turnout than Lehigh Valley for who's number one in Final X. So maybe we have it here. It McCona- is my- McConaughey sees it and he's like, "Man, that was awesome." Like, like, I'm gonna tell Chris Del Conte, the AD at Texas, to start a team again. Are they so buddies? Nice. Yeah, yeah, he's he's, he's the McConaughey is the minister of culture at the University of Texas. That's not good. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a fake job. Oh, that's the fakest it's job. It's a that's fake ever job, existed. but they're like, okay, McConaughey wants to be part of the program. Heck yeah, we're gonna let McConaughey. Yeah, he gets what oh, he wants. Wow. Um, wow. So yeah, I think uh, if if Round Rock High School can outdraw the Lehigh Valley, then I think it's something we should consider. Okay. Okay, that's yeah. why who's number one was probably going to stay in Austin, Texas, because I think we can freaking, once people are allowed to be near each other again, um, I think we're going to yeah. have a lot of people. Do we think that, um, do we think that, oh my gosh, someone said Vegas Stadium, uh, Raider Stadium in Vegas, that would be tremendous. But do we think that 2021 would is going to allow fans? Oh no, I don't even want to think about this. I don't know, I mean. <laughs> they almost did that in 20. 20- 20 with before they canceled it remember that like three-day window where it was gonna be NCAA we like, just media only yeah we were like what eight days out or seven days out or something we didn't even know what our deal was gonna be yeah we thought we were gonna be allowed but it wouldn't surprise me if there's like seven to ten and they space them out and you got to wear a mask seven to ten what thousand fans oh dude that's like half what it normally is that'll be sad 
Mm-hmm. This place isn't called Scott Trade Center anymore. No, it's Enterprise Center. They you know the a thing name every every five years. It's it hasn't annoying. been Scott Trade in a, a while. It was something else last time we went to. Really? Yeah. yeah. Something else. yeah. <laughs> Holy they changed it. it a lot. Oh my gosh. St. Louis used to be like one of my favorite places to go for instant blaze. It stinks now. It just yeah, it's getting. The 2009 was great. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Do we want to go to questions? No. Is there anything else before we uh, transition? Uh, no. Do we go to questions? Okay. Here we go. We have some good ones. We got some. If a wrestler jumps levels, how much credit do you give the wrestler and how much to the coach? Or conversely, if they fail to develop, how much responsibility is the wrestler's and how much do you attribute to the coach? Compare youth, high school, college, and senior levels at Ben Askren. Uh, I saw this question, and, and I don't know that there's necessarily an easy answer to it. Um, it's one of those things where ath athletes have to be able to do it themselves, but you need to set up an environment where they can do so. And obviously, mm -hmm. you know, we would say, you know, Penn State, obviously this environment is very conducive to making guys go to really high levels. You know, that's a college example. Um, so from a person to person basis, it's not really the coach's job, but obviously coaches can set up an environment where people can't jump the level. So I think it's the coach's and job. It's the coach's job to set up the environment to which people will flourish. Does that yeah. make sense? No, I, it, it makes sense. It's kind of how I thought about it, but I, I don't have the very credible opinion on this, but like, I think there's a, a threshold that the coach and environment has to hit for a guy to be able, but the, the lion's share of it, you got to put on the, on the individual, right? Because even at, yeah. the, at the best programs, even yeah, at Penn the, State. I, yeah, even at Penn state, there's guys that, that don't pan out that are good in high school. And there's guys mm -hmm. that it happens at Iowa and Ohio state guys that are number one and they don't materialize. And it's like, I mean, I think that's the obvious point that makes it, yeah, focus on the individual and why it's so much on the, to the individual's credit is like, yeah, there's so, there's so many absolutely. examples of incredible environments where guys don't thrive and, and do well. Yeah. Right. So, and, and then can, so then conversely, Christian, conversely in two ways, number one, there's people who flourish in really terrible environments. And then number two, you can see environments, which are the opposites where it makes it really hard for people to flourish, right? Where a lot of people fail, because of the obvious way the coach is running the program. So you, you do see both of those things. And those are those are probably even more evident to point out uh, and a little bit easier to point out um, than the opposite. Right. I think it can be... Penn... Go, ahead. Go ahead. No. I was going to say, Penn State sticks like way, way, way out. But then there's obviously a bunch of programs who are you know below that. Um, you know, like Brian Smith, I would say at Missouri has done a great job where you yes. know, I wasn't the number one recruit. I was able to flourish. And then you look at the guys, Mark Ellis, Max Askren, Raymond Jordan. You know, Jaden Cox was a really high-level recruit. But there was a, been a whole bunch of guys who weren't high-level recruits who have been able to flourish there. Um, and, and so, you know, but maybe he doesn't get enough credit for that. Whereas some of the programs who are really bad and you see a lot of, you know, high-level recruits go there and they don't pan out, that's pretty easy to, that's pretty easy to see as well. Yeah, I think coaching and culture are amplifiers of someone's yes. talent and uh, drive, right? So yeah, th that's kind of how I I would view it as well. So that makes sense. And then, so, so the one thing I, I would throw in there with the youth and high school level, and I don't think it it's very applicable to college or senior level. Um, a little bit it is, but is just the the ability of youth and high school coaches to create an environment where people want to be there, right? Because the more people you want to be there, the more people you can make really good. And, you know, you see some programs where they're really good, but they have really small numbers because the coach makes it it's such a tough place where, you know, they might have like three really good guys and the rest of the lineup stinks because they right. can't get anyone to stay out. So they have, you know, they're stuck just kind of pulling anybody they can to fill the lineup or have a bunch of forfeits. So you, you see that as well. And in youth wrestling, I see it where, I always go back to this one one quote, and I was at this one youth tournament. Uh, it was a dual tournament in Chicago area, and I think it was I think the one division was like fourteen and under, and the one division was like eleven and under, or something something to that effect. Um, if I'm not on, I'm, I'm really close with what the age division was. 
And the, the, the specific team had a really good team in the younger age division and no team in the older age division. And I remember the coach meeting, uh, the, the coach said something like, yeah, we got 46 kids in our club and 42 of them are aged 11 under. We just, there's just too many wimpy kids in our area. They can't stick it out. And it's like, Oh my God, do you not have the self-awareness to realize that it's you, it's your fault. Cause with our club at that point in time, well, because we don't let our nine-year-olds move up into our better class. Ours is probably opposite. Ours is probably like 85% above that age and 15% under that age. I mean, by you know, and so it's just like it, it was on him and he didn't have enough self-awareness to see that. So I think a big part, you know, probably the older you get, the less this is uh, pertinent, but the ability to make it in, a, in a, an environment where kids want to be there so you get the numbers – because if you can get the numbers, then it's easier to find more good kids within those numbers. If you have a smaller number, it's obviously harder to find good kids within that number. Yeah. I well, thinking about that coach, it's like why why is that such a hurdle? It just seems so it's so obvious. I don't That's, understand. Dude, Christian, youth why, wrestling, that I, is so common. It's so common. I know. I used to I used to war with people on uh message boards. When you know when Flo started doing the the two pieces instead of the singlets, and it's like talking about how it's a barrier to entry, and then the 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 just stupid logic of well, if they're not going to do it for the singlet, they're not tough enough to. It's like no man, anyone is. I, I really believe there's no inherent toughness required. It has to be built. You know, the, people don't just become. Yeah tough i mean maybe there are some people that are more there they do have that inherent gift right they just can naturally ma- handle more pain or more suffering but in general for everyone toughness is something that is developed right and so just be able to say oh they can't they won't wear a singlet or they don't want to wear a singlet for a sport they've never done ever they have no affinity they have no they have no draw to wrestling naturally they have nothing that really yeah. ties them to it and then you have this weird thing you have to wear and now, now they're not tough enough. Like I'm like, dude, some of the toughest kids I knew growing up wouldn't do wrestling because singlet. These are kids that get up at 5 a.m. and farm and then go to school and then get home from school. And I'm like, no, they're they're tougher than you are. But um, yeah. so I, I've just never understood that because to me, I don't think it's like some – we're not just some enlightened people. It just seems very <laughs> logical to me, um, and I don't understand be, why it's be not better logical. If- Better if we could think of ourselves as enlightened people. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I push back against these things all the time in the youth wrestling community. And that, that toughness, Christian, we, we've had this talent discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, and So now you're falling on my side of the spectrum on this specific topic. But, yeah, toughness, you don't come out of the womb tough, right? Mm-hmm. And are some kids tougher at age five? Well, it's because of how their parents treat them. Do my, when my kids fall down, do they cry? Well, very rarely. Why? Because I t- – Cause I told them, dude, you're fine. Get up. And then by the time they're three or four, they realize eh, I'm fine. I'll get up. You know, it's not that big of a deal. And right. so it's like that kind of stuff is built in, but you know, there's, there are parents and listen, there's nothing wrong with these parents. There's different preference who every time their kid falls, they baby them. And so what does that kid do every time they fall? They cry because they want yes. that sympathy and they get the babying. So yet, yes, I do believe toughness is built in. And what I always say to my coaches and I can think of a very specific example of I mean, he might be a 10 year old or might be 11 year old now um, kid, very low, low, low self-esteem, insecure. And, and, you know, but people say, oh, it was not tough. It's like, well, and I use that kid as a specific example to my coaches and say, guys, listen, that kid needs us more than the tough kid needs us. The tough kid, he's kind of already tough. So he doesn't really need that. Right. His parents have built that into him. This other kid who has these insecurities for whatever reason, he needs us more than, than the other kid does. So let's make sure we give him the extra love and, and make sure he figures out. And now, now six months later, the kid is, he, he's not super tough yet, but he's definitely getting, he's moving in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely something you can put time in and develop um, mm-hmm. toughness. I think it can be, you know, it's like, man, I feel like youth coaching is like where I would actually say in college, if you, if you make it to the level, you're a college wrestler. Like I put, the majority of your success and failures are on you. Whereas mm-hmm. for a youth wrestler, I feel like there's so it's the pressure is the highest on the coach at that point in time. In my opinion, yeah. I feel like 
I feel like it's a lot harder thing to do. I feel like teaching the foundations of the sport. They're like, listen, the things that Nick Soriano is doing now are probably the things he was doing when he was six, seven, and eight in general, right? Um, so Bob Sir, Bob Sir, probably didn't take any of his crap. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> um, or to, you know, insert any any elite wrestler. A lot of the skills that they learned and the technique are instilled early on, which to mm-hmm. me makes me, you know, I know, I'm thinking about this a lot more as Caleb wrestles now. It's like, man, this is a this is actually a really important time where he's learning the foundations. And if you can, there's coaches, you know, I, you know. I saw little league practices in Virginia. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is not gonna work. Yeah. This is and and it didn't. And those kids were all gone. And like it's like I couldn't. They're all run. gone. They're gone. They didn't wrestle in high school, right? And that's happened so many times. Yeah, and, and just every the way they structured the practice. I could go on and on about this, um, but yeah, it, it is really really important. And it's kind of unfortunate that the dynamic in general not certainly not the case in your instance ben is like our best coaches are coaching at the elite of the elite level right yeah and well it's starting to there's starting to be this movement where more and more good coaches are coaching at this level and i think as they're able to better monetize that i think that's what's what we'll have better coaches right um Mm -hmm. So, anyways, that was kind of a diatribe, but I like talking about it. It's good. I like going in that diatribe. Yeah, me too. Next question. Someone asked that was Randy's fault. Yeah, good question. Uh, City Wrestling Guy, is there a way to watch Rush Nationals? I mentioned this. Yes, there is. Check out our guy, JD Raider. He'll probably post the links in an article or something, but. I haven't uh, sent him out, too. Let's, let's pump JD because he said, here's the links. So, check out our guy, JD Raider. Uh, he tweeted something about it. I think he quote tweeted Ivan. But um, <laughs> he quotes cool it, Ivan. <laughs> yeah, and there are your links. So, listen, I'm, I'm I'm trying to give. Even though JD kind of came at us about big cat ignorance, he's ignorant. So I'm not gonna <laughs> uh, check out the links, and you can watch Russian Nationals, which start tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. So check that out. That will be exciting. We're probably like in the middle of the night, some point tonight, right? Yeah. Um, Julian uh, Schmalinski. Who is most likely to be the, quote, Kendall Cross underdog on the national level and go on to win the 2021 Olympics? Who do we think could do that? Kind of come out of nowhere, be an Olympic But Kendall champion. Cross didn't come out of nowhere. He made the Olympics in 92. Listen, take it up with Julian. The, the, the spirit... question is not good. But well, we feel like Frank, a Frank Molinaro came out of nowhere. Kendall Cross made the Olympic team in 92. He didn't win the Olympics, though. He did not win, but he, I mean – you know, Jamil I mean, Kelly may be a better example. He got silver. That would be a great example. That would, that would be a be great, great example. example. Okay. So throw out Kendall Cross, insert whoever. Who's the, like, could not only could would he be a dark horse to make the team, but also win the oh, Olympics. Man. That's tough, right? Only six ways. Yeah. It's like. I'm going to try to go to my rankings. Check out. At 74, there's no one you can even say. Like. Well, I mean, but that's what you feel. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that way about, like. Well, if, if, I Imar made, top, if Imar made the team and won, that would certainly be. Uh, but at that point, if Imar made the team, I'd be like, okay, mm-hmm. I guess he, he's definitely good enough to win the Olympics. You know? Yeah, you would say that. Absolutely. Absolutely. It would have to be a 57, I think. Had to be someone well, but like. There's a lot of those guys who you consider that have the ability to make the team, but are you saying all of them are long shots to win uh, Olympic medals? Well, because I don't. Cologne already has a world medal, Gilman has a world medal. Um, Spencer Lee and Dayton are both world champions at, at age divisions. So that's a tough sell also. Yeah. 65. Maybe if anyone at 65 wins the Olympics, <laughs> I think you have to say <laughs> we haven't medaled since 2006. So I'll just say whoever yeah. you want. As great as I think Jordan and Yanni are, it's like Zane, like the facts are the facts. No medals since 06. So, I guess at seventy. Like he wasn't even born. Thing. You would say the sure. same thing about eighty six Christians that if anyone beats David, you'd think they're right in there for a world title, right? Yeah. Man, if they're beating David Taylor. If they beat him. If something happens to yeah. David, like no, Drew, if they beat him. Foster, yeah, they beat him. Yeah, sure. I just I that I really can't envision. Um, with him being away from Jaden. It's like just beating David Taylor. Are you giving Bo Nickel no shot? 
Oh, I guess I gotta give Bo Nickel a shot. Um, I mean, he's the most interesting one for me. I know you hung out with Bo, and he probably told you that he can beat him or something when he did his camp, but I'm still a little dubious of that. Yeah, I want to see it happen. I mean, that's the most interesting one for me. Uh, I guess we'll see how Zahid looks against JB. That would be interesting. Yeah. What if Zahid... Uh, sh- so, you know, we, we just kind of, like, assumed Zahid's going to be an 86, right? But this is a guy who is a classic tweener. He's a 79 kilogram, probably truly. 79. Yeah. And he was a guy that throughout his career, when he was a 74, they're like, he is not... Everyone thinks he's, like, bigger... Than he really is. He's not that big. What if Sahid's using this as like a? Oh, let me see how I feel against the king. Maybe I'll. Uh, maybe I'm. He's kind of in a holding pattern. Maybe I'll. I'll head down to seventy four if things things go right. Man, I. Sh- I don't think that he can make seventy four. If it was day before, I'd give him a chance. If it's uh, morning up for both days, man, no way. I think it's lunacy, and I think it's being considered. Really? Yes. You do? Yes. Wow. I I, I never really considered that because I just thought that I mean the day before versus the morning of changes it so much because he, you know even on the day before in 2016 James Green couldn't even really compete because he killed himself to make the lower weight class right? Yes. And that's on um we'll say an 18 hour recovery cycle because you probably waited at like three o'clock. Uh, when you did the morning of man. You can't be cutting very much weight at all. In recovery. I, I would have never been able to make 74 kilograms if it was morning of and compete successfully. Got it. Um, okay. So that's that question. Next question. Sorry. Um, reclassifying is big in basketball. What if some wrestlers reclassify? What wrestlers do you think of reclassifying go right away? I just wanted Bracky to kind of explain what that means exactly. Yeah, I don't know what this means. Yeah. So reclassifying... Um, let's say you are, uh, who's number one or Shane Van Ness. Yeah. So he is class of 2021. He would appeal to the NCAA and reclassify. He could have reclassified to the class of 2020. If he was done with high school and met all the requirements to graduate, he reclassifies the class of 2020. It can go ahead and enroll in Penn state Mm. and wrestle and wrestle. Yeah. So that would be in basketball. That yeah. is the thing in basketball. Big thing. Really? Yeah. More so wow. in basketball than football. There have been a f- few rare cases in football, but yeah, basketball, it's a thing. Let it's me a, ask you this, Kyle. It's a quicker way to the NBA. That's what I was going to say. Can they do the one semester and then go to the NBA or what? That's exactly what they do. They play one season and then hope to get drafted, or even if they don't get drafted there, they go overseas and play. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, that's yeah, there you go. But we it's, don't have it's that only for the elite, elite guys. Like, you're not just seeing yeah. guys that. I don't know, are going to play at a really small group of five school, do it. You know, it's the top 10 prospects or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Some of these mm. kids are, are far and away better than, uh, you know, their, their high school co- competitors or whatever. But yeah. I think it's kind of against the, the – it'd definitely be against the grain for this to happen in wrestling just because everyone really values that time and preparation before the first day where they're going to compete. Right. No one's like, everyone can't wait to wrestle in college yet. They really want it to happen in general once they're ready and acclimated. So I don't see it happening, uh, becoming a trend in wrestling, but you know, it could happen. Yeah. Well, what's the, what's the upside to it? The upside of it in basketball is that they can go make a whole bunch of money. Uh, what's the upside of it in wrestling? Yeah. I guess you think you're not, being pushed i don't know getting getting to a higher level of competition quicker i guess yeah yeah i, I don't know. know i don't see it happening yeah okie doke mm-hmm. um this is a tough one um which team that finished outside of the top 10 in 2019 has the best chance of finishing top five in 2021 so which means we need to look at 2019 ncaa wrestling yes yeah. And figure out who is in the whatever. Top. Let's see. I hope this has the team. It doesn't. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I um, think I have a good idea. T- tough question. What's your answer, Bracken? Uh, Mich- I don't think Michigan was top 10, were they? Ooh. Really? That'd be, That'd be a good one. Hold on a second. I'm trying to find the final final team scores. Okay, here we go. 
So starting with number outside of the top 10, right? So number 11, VT, Virginia Tech, obviously. Arizona State, no. Where was Michigan? Fifth in 19. Dang. 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 Um, I thought they were. D- okay. So, okay, I'll, I'll go through the, the names quickly. Virginia Tech, Arizona State, Lehigh, UNI, Princeton, Iowa State, NC State, uh-oh. Lock Haven, UNC, uh, North Carolina, I should say. Oregon State, Wisconsin. Um, and I'm kind of scared. I don't love any of those. Northwestern. NC State. Uh, it's NC State, I think, for yeah. For sure. Yeah, probably NC State. What a what are you, a Wolfpack but with, Nation hater? With the new rules. But, I mean, with the new rules, I just feel like, I mean, I guess I, so I was an obvious one, number one. Uh, Cornell, Michigan, and Penn State are probably two, three, four for me. So, um, I mean, we literally just had to change the way we're thinking about this yesterday because that new rule that came out. Mm-hmm. So I guess I haven't had a ton of time to think about all the top teams. So looking at our preseason uh, rankings based team scores based on our individual rankings, NC State was. But six. these has to change bigly, right? I don't know what's going to change about them. Well, because all the redshirts are getting put in. Uh, but who's... That doesn't affect the team scores because we had all the guys going for all these teams in the rankings. Oh, you did? Yeah. Really? It's not like we weren't projecting redshirts. For for someone like – well, for <laughs> someone like Penn State, um, someone like Kirk Fleet is not earning, like, major points at this point. So there's. But there's did ob- you have, like, like yeah. uh, who's obvious? Like, uh, Cam Amin. Or, uh, what's the Amin? Do you have him in there? Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. He's just not ranked very high right now. He's, he what was, are you talking about? He's like number two. I met, I met Miles. I met Miles. He said he knows him at Miles. Oh, I met Miles. Yeah, Miles is number two. Yeah, Miles is in okay there. number two. At one seventy four, okay. we don't even think he's going seventy four, but we don't. We don't know. Definitely yet. not going seventy four. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What about the Retro Richard? So like, uh, who's going to be yesterday? Plot and Keegan no. and those guys. They're not in there probably. No, because they have not wrestled a college match. Got it. That's okay. You get Fair right. enough. So I think NC State, Virginia Tech, um, are probably the ones. If I had to say. Okay. Cool. All right. Looking here. Okay, from Salty Walk On. My <laughs> boss called a 9 a.m. meeting for the sole purpose of scheduling another meeting in three weeks. Which out of bounds continuation from last week's open would have been an appropriate response? So he's so the, he, so, the, he, <laughs> so he could go Dom Bradley goes Hamida into the into the bleachers. You go Hayden Hydley. Any take your Hayden Hydley pick here. Um, <laughs> you could go Trent Hydley under hook into the, to Matt D. Um, what what do you go to with this one? What's your favorite continuation? I think we know the answer, but I'll ask anyways. Well, you know the answer. Dom you know Bradley it. Hamida. He's into got the it. boards. Boom! Put it in there. Here we go. It, <laughs> oh, you guys had it ready. This is glorious. Boom! <laughs> Gosh, that would hurt so bad. This you know, so this looks like this looks like W so much. Yeah. He goes, I hope he's not hurt. That's not good. He wrestled he's the rest of the match fine. and then wrestled another match All afterwards. Right. He's yeah. tough. Rubs Sean Bournemouth told him to suck it up. Um, Which one would you guys do? Same one. I feel like I mean, yeah. If you're, that's got to be the most satisfying. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> because like for for how Hydley put him down, it's not like he came down with his shoulder on top of his belly. He's kind of like plopped him down. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if we had Tommy Gant in the mix with his Valencia, he had a wide array of. We had the table. We had him thrown into Zeke Jones. So he could have got got a couple of different directions. But I think Hamida Dom is you just run your feet until you hit a wall, right? What's better than that? That's hey, like so. Ray, Ray calls the meeting, dudes. Christian, and you just freaking double leg him, drive him into the stairs. Yes. Payow. Payow. Um. Uh, with NCAs heading back to Cleveland, twenty six, will we be staying at the Murder Hotel again? Ask Jeremy Boyer. I feel like we have to. I feel like we do. University and if everyone or is University Hotel, I think is what it's called. Um. If you Google University Hotel Cleveland, I think the number one Google search is there was a murder at the University Hotel in Cleveland. Um, University it, Hotel and Suites. Yeah. Oh, it's a suite now. We didn't get any of the suites. I feel like they put an and suites on almost every hotel now. Well, where are the suites? How do you get the suites? 
When you look for me, you can't find it. Um, yeah, there it is. We've got the two. <laughs> it's a two star hotel, Christian. It's a two can't star. I don't know how it didn't have like it didn't have many of the basic basic functions of a of a hotel. I, I just searched University Hotel and Suites Cleveland murder and like a million stories come up. Yeah, we got it. Help yeah. Cleveland police ID murder suspects. Man shot dead downtown Cleveland hotel hallway. Yeah. Wow. We weren't on the – I remember we looked. We were not on the floor of the murder. Right. We're we were all on the same oh floor. Gosh. So there were no spirits or anything. Um, wow. So what's the big deal, I say? What's the big deal? Uh, okay. I think anything here sticking out. Oh, oh, I love this one. What, man? I wonder what NCAs in Colorado would be like. Thoughts, Ben Askren? Uh, I, I was thinking I would love it. There's actually college teams there. You know, there's between Wyoming, Northern Colorado Air Force. Uh, they're all, they're all relatively close to Denver. Um, I would think the coaches wouldn't want to do it because the gassing issue. I That's mean, those why dudes I want are it. So That's tired. what I want. I want. Maximum gassing issues. That's that. Listen, NCAs in Denver. That's how we get gas tank area chip. That's how he gets his title. <laughs> that's the only thing between him and and a title. The problem is to start, he's going to have to beat a guy who's trained at elevation in Utah, in Orndorf. So it all comes back to gas tank Gary. But I think it would be awesome to have it in Denver. Yeah, Pepsi Center where uh, the Nuggets and the Avalanche play, 18,000. So that's right on pace with all the other arenas. But could you guys really uh, – there would be so much gassing. I mean, teams would have to go out a week early to, like, have a reasonable shot. You can't show up a day early and, and expect to, uh, you know, keep up at that altitude. I don't know, man. Is there, are they really going to – to talk to me a little about training at altitude, Ben, as uh, Bracky and I it's, are yet, yet to do it. Yeah. I don't think, listen, like I said, if you give yourself like two days, three days, I don't think it's a huge deal. But that first day, you show up and you start working out, you're like, oh, my God, you want to die. Like, I'm so serious. That first day, you, you show up, you start working out hard, you feel like you want to fall over. Yeah. So I did the, I, I will say, I, at the OTC once, I did the COG, um, the what do they call it? The incline. And that yeah. was really hard. And you, I was like literally out of breath immediately, but I was not even in good shape then. So I'm like, well, I was just probably just a baby, but it was definitely, it felt different, but I think if I was in good yeah, shape, it doesn't it really matter how bad a shape you're in or a good a shape. You, you, there's something about that and you just, you feel it like immediately. So you don't even get tired, but you got tired there or you, you feel it differently there. It's like the, burning yeah oh yeah it's way different and it, it doesn't take me much to adjust give me like two days two and a half days i'm i'm all good but that first couple workouts is like it's terrible okay man yeah Coming from you that's kind of surprising um yeah people would gasp so hard <laughs> i mean except the wyoming wrestlers wyoming wrestlers wouldn't and northern Colorado. yeah i mean there's this hilarious story of uh the year before I got to Mizzou, so it was probably Coach Smith's second year, and he took them and they wrestled at Wyoming. I don't remember if it was just there or if they wrestled somewhere else first. And all their guys gassed out so bad. <laughs> and then and then I don't know why, but he couldn't find anywhere else to work out. So he made them do a pool workout in the hotel and everyone was like dying. And there's just some some really hilarious stories about that trip. Cool. Um Yeah. Um well I think that's it. Um, we can call it a weekend. I got seven teams going to the USA Club duels this weekend, so maybe I'll bring you some news. But I'm sure the full wrestling world doesn't really care all that much about that. Anything else good this weekend? Where's at, that? Where's level? that going down at? With Kansas and Dells. Oh baby, dominating the <laughs> yeah. Dells. Love the Dells. No, that's different. That's a different tournament. Dominating Dells. Is but in I March. just I don't even know what Dells are. I just wanted to say that. You just tournament. have to dominate when you're in the Dells uh, yeah, at I, all that, times. Yeah, I'm just saying that's just that should be your uh, mentality for your squad. I got what it. is the Dells? So the Wisconsin, Wisconsin Dells. Uh, let's see. So it started probably started out because there's like a lot of really cool lakes and rock formations and stuff. So it probably started out as a tourist destination for that. And then it became like the, the water park capital of the world. They got Noah's Ark, United States world largest world. Uh, is it the world or United States? One of the largest water parks. I don't know if it's the world or United States. And then a bunch of like really huge hotel water parks, that kind of thing. Dang. Okay. All right. Yeah. We'll go there for vacation next year. Hey, 
Thank you guys so much. Fun week of FRL. We'll be back next Tuesday with all kinds of stuff to talk about. That will be officially Super 32 week. A little oh, tiny yeah. tournament in Myrtle Beach. Dang, I wish I was going kind of. Uh, thanks so uh. much for listening and watching. We'll be back Tuesday. We hope you guys have a super, super good weekend. Make sure you check out all the content. We've got a lot of stuff coming up. we got Super 32 <laughs> previews. <laughs> What's so funny? Giggles. Uh, Andrew Escada said... Put Met Musa, Musa Kaim in Denver. Just for entertainment. Oh my <laughs> gosh. He would die. He would die. Literally. Yeah. Oh, we need Musa Kaya versus Metcalf in Denver. That's all you need to know. That sells itself. <laughs> oh, Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Really appreciate it. We'll be back Tuesday. See you guys. Thank yeah. you.